Welcome to Go on the Run. And in this video, I'll show you how I built a to-do web application that was used in WebSocket Part 1 using the Arela framework. We will be developing the very basics of a to-do application. And our to-do application is going to allow us to create and delete to-dos. The reason why I decided to do a to-do application is because the other application we're doing sort of had a lot going for it, but it was still sort of big, and I want to simplify the scope a little bit. And um, we're going to be able to mark a to-do as completed or done. So I'll develop our web client in Arela. Arela is a framework for developing web applications, single-page web application. Now, if you haven't worked with single-page web applications before, I encourage you, if you're serious about web application, you should definitely look at them. There are a number of them out there. There's Vue.js, React.js, there's Angular, and I've just, just discovered Arello. And so what he's just seen me do is launch the Arela command line CLI to create a new Arela application. And I told it the name of my action application is client. So it creates a directory client, but I had already created a directory. So it was empty. So now you can see it populating the directory. Let's run the application. So. Okay, and that's it. So if you're looking at this part of the video, which means you're interested in seeing, oh, I developed the Arela application. So as you can see, I just started the application and I say, hey, you run and watch. And that simply means watch for changes and update my web browser as I make changes. So. Here's the hello world that I get when I first create that Arela application. And now I'll start by creating the to-do. So if you're new to Arela, I can't really explain everything right now. Um, so the first thing I want to do is create a new file for to-do. And by default, when you create a new to-do, of course, it's not completed yet. All right, so that's all we need for our to-do object. Now, if we go and look at our app.html, as you can see, our application is running here, and it says, hello world. Well, that's being driven by this template called app.html, because this represents the component for our application, the root component. You can see that what it's doing, it's fetching the value of a variable called message and it's reading that value by using dollar sign, open close parentheses. Now, if you don't know ECMAScript 6, this might not make sense, but if you know Unix, you can you know that oh, this is how you evaluate a variable from the environment, okay? So that is coming from this file. So notice the naming convention, app.html and app.js. This means that these two go together and you Arela knows that once you have this name this way, so you don't have to explicitly say that these two should go together. And so it's saying, well, I want to display the value of message in this template within h1 tag. And where does it get the message from? Well, this is the value. This is where the value of that message variable is being stored. And as you can see, it's just simply ECMAScript 6 class app that has the property message on it. OK, so if we want, we can change this to just simply world and if I wait and the changes are saved because I have watch enable, notice all that updates automatically. So I want to change this to something else though. So we're doing a to-do application. I want my heading to just say to-dos. So this is heading equals 
to do's. Okay. The other thing we want is to be able to, well, where did, oh, of course I have to go back to this and say that now I have heading. Okay, so the next thing I want to be able to do is have a place where I can enter and store to do's. Let's do it this way. Let's say I wanted to have a form and the button where I can enter enter it to do title. So let's put a form on our page. So there we go. I have a place where I can enter text for my to-do or the description for my to-do. And of course I can add, click the add button. This is causing a submit of the entire form because I haven't tied it in yet to JavaScript. So this is our front end. Okay. The next thing I want to do is when I click this add button, it should call some JavaScript method that would then save my to-do. And of course, it should read the value from this input field. So how do I do that? Well, let's go to the back end first and let's create some ways for us, some methods that would help us do this. So it seems that I need to keep a list in my application. I need to keep a, li keep a list or array of to-dos. So, so this represents an empty array where I intend to store my to-dos. I also need a variable to represent the current to-do that somebody wants to create. So this would be the description that I want to tie to this input field so that when somebody hit the to-do button, I will then read this value, create a to-do and add it to this list. Okay, so now that we have the all the properties I think we need for to do application so far, now we need some method. So let's do add to do. So notice how my ID is offering to automatically import the description for that class to do, which I exported from the to do that JavaScript file. Now you don't see that JavaScript because it's not required. So I'll enter here to get this imported automatically. So it's import the to do class that's been exported from my to do that JavaScript. So that's great. So if I do this, notice how it says, ah, description any, and that is exactly what we want. And there we go. So that's all it is for us to add a to do. So what about if we tie this into our front end? Well, to tie it into the front end, what we need is for our to do description to be tied to this value. Arello makes this very, very easy. And the way it does it is by saying, I want to bind to this value property. And what do I want to bind? I want to bind a property that's being exported. And the property here in this case is to do description. Okay, so we want to bind to that property. Now, when we type in our text box here, that value gets goes into this variable and it's linked to our JavaScript. So we have HTML and JavaScript tied together. Notice how easy this is to do. We don't have to do any jQuery. We don't have to do any document that find by and all these other silly things that we did in our previous application. Well, similarly, we have a button and we want that when we hit the button, now this is a submit, it's called a submit on this form. So we can bind to the click event of this button, but instead I wanna to bind to the submit event of this form. So in terms of values, you bind to um, properties on the form, but event you trigger, you wanna trigger on them. So I want to be able to call add to do. And we don't have to pass anything to our add to do function because it doesn't take any value. Now, at this point, this should work. Of course, we don't know if it's actually working. We can, of course, before our function end, we can do console.log to log the value of our to dos. And if we go back here and I'm using Firefox, so I will do web developer 
console. You can find pretty much the same thing in all your IDEs. So let me clear the screen and now type something. And notice our array is displayed here and notice the value for the first one. If I try something else again, take out the trash and you can see I have yet another my array element two and you can see it's listed again. And so we are creating to do's and we are adding it to that list. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, since heading, we've been able to use heading and to do description from the front end, it makes sense that we'll also have access to to do's, the array. So all we need to do now is be able to list them. So one way of listing it is let's say we want to do an unordered list. And so we have a list item and we can imagine that for a list item, we want, of course, to our to do member have a checkbox. So we want to render a checkbox and we ideally want to be our checkbox to be able to reflect whatever value is on our to do for the checkbox. The property that we want is the checked property and we want to bind to that. So which to do do we want to use? Well, we have a list of them, but for this example, use a variable called to do. So to do that done. And that doesn't exist yet. Um, we can certainly create it. So for example, we can have a variable called. Of course, um, this will fail because at first we don't have a zero element to set here. So instead, what I'll do is I'll move this to our function here. And so every time you actually, let's make this the last to do that we have created. So every time we've we created to do, let's just store that here. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is exposing a variable to do in my application that represent the to do that we just created. So at first there wouldn't be anything, but um, once we hit our first to do, it will be there. So we bind the done variable for that. The next thing we want to be able to do is print out the description for our to do. So let's put that in a span. So, and so let's see if that works. So if we go here, of course, there's nothing. So uh, what about if we create a to do? And notice you can see take out trash. Okay. If you create another to do, and you can see it replaced it because all we're doing is using the very last to do. Of course, if we check it, we believe that oh, that's being checked, but we have no way of knowing that. So if this checkbox is actually being bounded to our to do object, what we like is that if you check a to do, maybe we cross it out. So one thing we can do is use some style, CSS style. So let's say style text decoration strike through and see how that looks and if we want to use that. And so let's add something. And so there's line through. What we want is as we toggle our to do, make our line appear or disappear, put a line through our to do if it's completed, right? So what we want to do is evaluate this value. So for that, we know that if you want to evaluate something, well, you need some an expression to evaluate. So this is how we define expression in ECMAScript 6 in strings. And I'll use a tertiary operator. And what that is, is basically says, this question mark says, evaluate the first argument and if it's true if it evaluates the true then i want you to return the second argument and if it's false then return the third argument so if you've never been exposed to the tertiary operator it could be a little bit weird but it's very compact now why am i seeing a message well if i put my cursor over this my id is telling me and i don't know if you're gonna have the plugin for this but it essentially says you don't want, since you're using CSS and you want to make it dynamic, well, you need to use the CSS property instead of the style property. And so let's go back now to code to our application and set create a to do and I'll check it. And there you go. As you can see that when we check our to do off, it gets crosses out. Well, 
right now this we have a list of to do's but we're only we're only so let me get do this but we're only showing the last to do so what we want is to be able to iterate over our list to show each to do and so for that Arella has something called repeat for and so if we do repeat for and we give it a name we say repeat for to do of the list of to do's so that's that so now we're saying go through each to do and assign it a value to do and so we are already using to do within our li here so that's going to be the value it will use and i'll just go just to make sure that we don't have any confusion i'll remove this and let's remove this right now we don't need this anymore and so let's go back to our application now so again what i've done is just simply say repeat for which loops over all of our to-dos that's been exported or provided here in this array. So this to-do variable is valid which in this for loop only. So it's, you could think of it as a local variable that gets created and accessible within this list, um, list item. And so let's create a new thing. And notice, oh, it's much cleaner because we have nothing to show. We don't have a list item. If I press enter, I don't have to click, but if I press enter in this box, it also submit. And once it submit the form, guess what? Our handler gets called and this works exactly the same way. And so I, I can go either way, click on the button or just press enter, type and enter, which is much faster. And so that's great. One of the requirements we had was that we should be able to remove to-dos. So this is great that we can list to-dos, but we are not able to remove them. So what I'll do is add a remove button next to each to-do so we can remove it. So that is pretty easy. We have a loop already creating our to-dos. So let's do button and let's do remove. Oh, you already saw how we were able to trigger on the submit. So in this case, I want to trigger on the click event for this button. So, so let's do trigger. And we haven't written it yet, but it seems that if we have an add to do, we should just have a remove to do. In this case, when the add to with add to do, it was we know where what value to use to get the um, to create the to-do. It was the property. So the method used this property. Here, we need to specify which to-do we want to remove. So let's just pass in that to-do. Again, the to-do we want to remove is going to be a variable that's created here in this for loop, and it will be accessible within this list item. So let's go back to our code and write our remove to-do. So I'll use the double equal comparison. And so what it says is if index is minus one, then I know it's not there. But if it's not minus one, I know it's there. So if it's not minus one, then I want to splice it out. And I believe we already updated our client or HTML. So let's see if this works. Ah. So it looks like I've created some to do and I've joined the gun a little bit. So E F G. All right. So let's remove H and it works. And let's just remove D for fun and R and B and F and E. And as you can see, I can remove items from my to do. So I can add and remove items from my to do. So at this point, we have the client application. We need to put webs to add websocket if you like what i'm doing you want to support it please contribute if you can afford to otherwise to that keep enjoying the videos subscribe spread the word take care bye see you in the next video